So here we are outside the National Anthropology Museum of Mexico. Behind me is one of the most impressive pieces in the whole country. It's the so-called Statue of Tlaloc, and it was found in an area called Coantlachan. This is supposedly Aztec, although there are some reports it could go back to 800 AD. It weighs 168 tons, it's 33 feet high, and it's the largest megalithic carved stone block in all the Americas. It once stood in the Aztec city for you know hundreds of years before it got moved here. It was discovered in the 1800s when they were digging up um, foundations and pipes in the town. And it was on the edge of the lake of Texcoco, uh, the main Aztec city, which was more famous than Tenochtitlan, which is in the center of Mexico City. Um, and so it was a really important statue and Tlaloc is a really important deity. But the thing about this one is that it may actually be female. And this is the big question mark about this. Uh, so it could be more of a fertility symbol, a fertility statue, and uh, related to the rain, agriculture, fertility, even the goddess. It could be a male statue. That's the big debate about this. And so it's an impressive piece, whichever way you look at it, but it could be much older much, much older than Aztec times. It could be 800 AD. It could go back even to the Olmec era and it could have been re-carved because that part of Mexico City was known to be inhabited by the Olmecs. And we'll see evidence of that inside the main museum here. The other thing about Tlaloc, if this is Tlaloc, is the fact that he was the king or the leader of the Quinemetzin giants. Now, these go back to the very first age of ancient Mexico. These were the builders, supposedly, of Teotihuacan, the builders of Cholula, uh, Quilquilco, and other sites. And we have evidence of actual giants living in the Americas, especially here in Mexico and North America. And so there is some sort of interesting discussion to be had about that. The fact that he was their leader, and also he was said to be able to summon thunder and lightning. So it's the same skill set as the sowers of thunder giants that we find in ancient Britain, which we feature in our book, The Giants of Stonehenge in Ancient Britain. And so the same principles are at play here. We actually went near the town. We went to a site not far from where this was actually uh, originally on display. And there's many beautiful pieces there. Um, and uh, you know, it really is, really is worth checking this out before you actually go into the museum. We've caught it so the sun's just on one side of it. But if you go around the back, you can see the bulk of this piece of stone. It's a basalt type of rock. It's very hard, very hard to carve, but the Aztec were master stone carvers. And we'll see more evidence of that as we go around the museum and Mexico. So when it was moved from Coandlichan, it was a really interesting event in itself. It was a really tough thing to move, obviously. It was the largest stone block, carved stone block in Mexico. And in 1963, when it was bought here, what, amazing thing happened, like a Sowers of Thunder experience happened where massive lightning, thunder and storms and rain took place while it was being moved. And it was almost like it awoke the gods of the area. And it caused much disdain to the locals who didn't want it moved. They were kind of chanting, they were trying to stop it, campaigning to keep it in its original location. And this is the case with many stone blocks we find here in Mexico. They feel that if you move the stones, it's going to cause problems and, you know, it's going to stop fertility in the land. It's going to cause bad luck. And this is the same principles we find in ancient Britain with the sites there. And so there's a real story about this. Not only is it the largest megalith monolith here in Mexico. There's also relation to the giants, the Quinemetzin giants, and the Sowers of Thunder when it got moved, for instance, and also Tlaloc itself, who really emerged around the time of Teotihuacan about 2,000 years ago. Um, you know, he was actually carved on the pyramid of Quetzalcoatl. We'll see that in the video we're going to make about that. In between Quetzalcoatl, so he was like a sort of a connection he had a connection with Quetzalcoatl he could have even been its opposite you know whereas Quetzalcoatl was like the higher realms Tlaloc was all to do with the earth and the mud and the rain and so there's lots of discussion about what this could really mean but so this could potentially originally have been that old and then it was recarved it was replaced uh, during Aztec times 
Um, but really, there is evidence it goes back to 800 AD, and this was before the time of the Aztecs. So it's not as far back as the Olmecs or the Toltecs, perhaps the Mayas, even though they weren't really in this area. But yeah, it's just an interesting piece, and you've got to check this out. We'll have a little look around it, we'll look at some of the details on it, so you can see uh, the immensity and quality, even though it's been quite badly weathered. So you can see it's got like a headdress. This is very similar to the sort of style that we find at Teotihuacan. So it could well have been influenced by that. Uh, it's got these cut marks in this protrusion. It's got like a skirt, like a dress really, or it could be an apron. Now this apron motif is interesting because again, that is often related to the giants. Now it had many, many more carvings on it. We'll show you images, old antiquarian photos and illustrations so you can get a sense of the exact detail of this. But I've never really made a video about this. I've never really kind of looked into it, but look at the back of it. It's wearing like a kind of backpack. You can't really see, I'll have to get in close for this, but you can see it's got like striations all through the stone. And these are, this is the same kind of technique that we find in Peru, Egypt, even a Stonehenge. But you can see that going all the way up there, so it'll just, it'll just add to the weight of the stone so intensely coming in at now estimated to be 163 tons which is stunning you know it's by, much bigger than the largest Olmec piece the largest Olmec head is 40 tons from Lacobata but as we'll look inside the museum we'll, we will see some pieces that are almost this big there's a piece a very similar piece that was from Teotihuacan but it was smaller than this but it has the same kind of style so we have to question was the Teotihuacan culture actually responsible for creating this and did the Aztecs then adopt it but anyway we hope you enjoyed this quick overview of this particular statue here the Tlaloc statue and outside the National Museum of Anthropology uh, to get a sense you know just to have a feel of the largest megalith ever created ever on display in ancient Mexico.